Hi, so I'm William Barzi from the British Blacklist, and today we are joined by the head writer of the new Marvel Disney Plus series, The Falcon and the Winter Soldier, Mr. Malcolm Spellman, also known as Black Excellence Embodied. So how are you doing, man? Yeah. Seen you doing the media rounds recently, man. How are your energy levels? Oh, man, I, 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 it's been beyond, it, the, 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 the wave has been amazing. Um, and seeing how people have been responding, it's just been, you know, sort of out of body experience, bro, a vibe for sure. No, we're catching a vibe over here in the UK, man. And the reason I had to emphasize black excellence at the beginning was because you're operating under two of the most intense microscopes there are. That's the Marvel fandom and black culture. Neither will accept anything less than exceptional. Um, you've delivered, but um, how does it feel like to navigate in both spaces? No pressure. It, it, it was pressure, bro. I mean, and you show up feeling it and you and you hear it from your family and the cats you grew up with and you know it's got to be right and the great thing was you know at no point was marvel scared to let us do what was right you know what i'm saying i think we really got to all tip our hat if when you see episode 2 just remember black panther because if they hadn't did what they did and shown the world shown shown that marvel fans in the entire world could embrace something that's deeper and has a different color I don't know, you know, I don't know, but Marvel was great. And, you know, I knew what I had to do. And so did the rest of the uh, team. No, it's interesting that um, you like harboring the point of like being embraced by Marvel. Because in the first episode, there are two scenes which stick out to me in particular. There's the scene where Sam Wilson, a.k.a. Falcon, hands back Cap's shield. And there's the scene where the shield is handed to an unknown white male. Um, there's a duality there. Um, with a black man essentially rejecting the flag and the flag rejecting him, as we've seen with Colin Kaepernick kneeling and Muhammad Ali refusing to go to Vietnam. So I just wanted to know um, how important it was for you to focus on that element so early on out of the gate. Bro, wait till you see where it's going. I mean, <laughs> it, it is, it is, none of it is by accident and none of it is being done frivolously. You know what I'm saying? And I do think, it was no way, you know, because you have to clear it with Anthony and Kevin and everyone has to agree on when you're making these big decisions, right? And I think everyone knew, man, if, you, if you're going to tell an honest story and you got a brother from the South, right, who grew up the way he did, his identity is decidedly Black. You know what I'm saying? He knows he got to face his sister back home and you heard those Uncle Sam jokes, you know what I'm saying? Like, he knows what he's got to deal with. And, and, and I just, you know, it, everyone knew that the honest decision from Sam when faced with that symbol was going to be trepidation, if not giving it up. Yeah, no, mo most definitely, like you said, it's sort of like a shorthand with um, Black people and their relationship with patriotism, because um, it's not as easy for us to embrace it because it doesn't want to embrace us. Um, so that's what I also wanted to ask was, what most people want to know is why these two characters, Bucky and Sam, how did you know that they would be able to carry a whole series, which is essentially over five hours of content, so longer than a film, by themselves without Captain America as the glue? Is you ready? ready? Okay. You say you ready. What are you doing? Whole squad ready. Ready. Are you having a staring you contest? Are you ready? Ready. ready? ready? Is you ready? Just blink, sweet Jesus. I mean, how old are you? It's, I got to tell you, there was a cheat code that I can't take credit for because they, the series, Kevin and, and Nate and Zoe, they all knew they wanted these two characters before I ever came on board. And if you go back to Civil War, that one moment when they're in the car, it, it's everybody in the Marvel Universe knew they could carry a franchise. And in 12 seconds, you knew. And that's not going that deep, but that's a special thing. That chemistry that them two dudes have, that's a special thing. So I, I can't take no credit for that. And then one thing that I, I hope you can take credit for is um, the way that you managed to humanize um, Sam Wilson, because like you've um, harbored on the scene where um, he was like trying to secure a loan with his sister. And I just feel like that is something that only someone with your lived experience can build that world around him. So why did you feel like you needed to take him out of the super suit and put him back into the real world? It, it, it was the key because there was such a huge discussion that you was not going to be able to avoid. You know what I'm saying? Like we, we went all the way back to Endgame and whether they meant it or not, you know what I'm saying? When he gets handed the shield, his first response is it feels like it belongs to someone else. Right. 
And now he's been living with it. And for me, and you know, most of our writers room was black. The, the Marvel assigned you a creative partner and they assigned me their senior guy, Nate Moore, who's a black man, right? It, it was, we knew that that for this thing to be feel modern and take we were supposed to be first up and take us into the new phase this is the, this is the world today man and the books have always done it and the heroes could not feel like people who don't know what it's like to have real problems and real struggle and i if, if i'm proud of anything it's that even bucky himself but especially sam will feel like by the end of the series the audience is going to feel very, very, very secure in knowing they do know what it's like. You know what I'm saying? They, they know what a day-to-day -day struggle is like. I appreciate your time, brother. I also appreciate that you weren't humble in the last one. You took full credit for writing all of that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it was a team. Listen, let's be fair. The writer's room was black. It was a bunch of us. But, bruh, episode two, wait till you see. I'm there, man. We're all there. Pleasure, man. Best of luck with you. So, who would like to start? Mr. Barnes, why does Sam aggravate you? 15 seconds to drop! So what's our plan? Hey. Great. Superheroes cannot be allowed to exist. I have no intention to leave my work unfinished. The world's upside down right now. Where do we start? We came here to see Jet. What you got? No, no, no. Not on my Buck, I have a plan. Oh yeah? What is it? Is you ready? Here we go again, huh? We've been grinding hard. Hello, girl, kick your ass. I gotta get that first shot off before that pussy. See? That wasn't so hard. Are you ready? Hey. Is you ready? ready? Okay. You say you ready. What are you doing? Squad ready. Ready. Are you having a staring contest? Ready. Are you ready? Ready. ready? Is you ready? Just blank. Sweet Jesus. I mean, how old are you? Hey.